who was giving acting lessons, wherein you, you know, you go in, you do skits and things like that. She's an acting teacher, so uh, I sacrificed my, uh, to the point of eating hot dogs and ramen noodles most of the time, to the point, so I could go to uh, acting classes, that kind of thing. It's, acting is a muscle, they say. You know, you have to act, exercise it, at least weekly. So that was my life for a while. Then my agent calls up one day. Hey, you got to get in here quick. Uh, I want you to, uh, you got an audition set up and it's for the producers of a film that's uh, going out, uh, out to Santa Fe to shoot a Western, okay? Uh, so, all right, I got all the pertinent information, went down to uh, meet the producers of um, um, a, a little, uh, it was actually a pilot at the time, <clears throat> called Longarm. And so I get into the office and uh, sit down uh, and meet the producers and the casting people and say, well, you know, uh, we're sort of late running here in terms of casting, and, uh, so we're looking for somebody here who can ride a horse, shoot a gun, and speak a language other than English simultaneously. Hey. I can do all those things, all right. Hey, this is good, this is good. So I, I think, uh, there I am thinking I got a chance. And what I had done, and I, I'll only tell you guys this, I'm not telling anybody else. What I had done, because this was, this called for an Indian part, I had uh, gotten out some of my old leathers. You know, I've got, got my leather <laughs> shirt with the raggedy bottom, you know, and the fringe that's, uh, you know, here and there, and that kind of uh, taking, uh, you know, uh, fix my hair, Indian light, <laughs> and I went down, <laughs> and uh, so they say, okay, these, these these are the lines that you have to say, and uh, you have to say them, and, and, uh, and luckily I speak Cherokee, right? So, all right, great, this served me well. I go in, and uh, these are the lines. So I deliver the lines, bada bing, bada bing, bada bing, and I said. Great, great. I, I think uh, they all look at one another and say, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, why not? Yeah, sure, okay, yeah. And uh, he said, all right, so uh, are you available such and such a time? Oh, oh God, yes, okay. But, so uh, there I had the job. Then the, the, the main producer kind of pulls me over and said, uh, come here. Uh, so you got the job, so get your agent to uh, do the deal and we'll, we'll get this all going. And, uh, for crying out loud, take that yellow, take that leather thing off and take that feather out of your hair for crying out loud. You know, you're in Los Angeles here. I mean, oh, excuse me. Ah. But that was my first job out of uh, Los Angeles, wherein I uh, went out to Santa Fe and made a Western for crying out loud. It's, uh, it's quite a trip down memory lane for me to tell that. And only you know it. Okay? Okay, that's a, an agreement between you and I. All right. My life in show business has afforded me travel all around the world. But a lot of times uh, people will, uh, you know, say to me, well, what is the best part of doing what you do? And I think mainly I, it's, it's the, to me, other than the actual acting itself, what it is, is the opportunity to, to see so many different kinds of people in the world. And ultimately to discover that we are all pretty much the same. Everywhere we go, no matter what kind of language we speak, what kind of culture we come from, our basic needs are all the same. You know, we need, we need food, clothing, we need companionship, we need love, we need relationships. And all over the world, that's the case. And being a, being a stick Indian from out in Adair, near Adair in Cherokee County, this was quite the, uh, quite the uh, discovery for me 
having grown up and mainly spent most of my time here in Oklahoma, when I first went to uh, Los Angeles, I had to ride out to uh, uh, San Diego. I went to San Diego, actually, because uh, that's the only place I could fly into. And then I took a bus from San Diego up to Los Angeles. And talk about a culture shock. I thought Tulsa was a big city. I thought Tulsa was the wow in Oklahoma City, those places I'd been, and I thought that was really something else. So when I had Los Angeles, oh my God. This was uh, at a time when, uh, at about the time when uh, Reagan shut down all of, a lot of mental health uh, uh, facilities throughout California and everything, I got out of the bus station there and walked into the third world walked into the third world where I step off, have my suitcase in my hand, and a car pulls up, and, and a man wants to help me do this, and help me find this, and, help, well, and they're sort of arguing over it. No, 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 not him. Here, let me take you here. I'll show you this, I'll show you that. And then I look up and down the streets, and people are living in, in uh, refrigerator boxes. All up and down the street. Talk about a culture shock, but I noticed that some of the nicer amana boxes had TV antennas sticking up out of them, you know? And, and you just see a pair of feet sticking out and somebody in there enjoying click, click. They even had remotes, I think, at the time for their amana boxes and TVs. It was quite the shock. But I persevered. I persevered. And during all that time, I'm still thinking, what's going to happen if I don't get anything to do? What if, what's going to happen if I can't continue to work here? I know I got lucky and I got one job, but you know that simply doesn't make it in this business. In this business, you're only as good as your last film. And if it was successful, wonderful. If it wasn't, went down the tubes, oh well, you'd probably go down the tubes with it a bit. But persevere, persevere, stick with it. Everything you have in your mind, body, and soul, you give to it. You give to it, and then as time goes on, it'll start giving back to you. That's a give and take situation. And I would, having worked uh, this past summer on, uh, you, some of you may have seen We Shall Remain last night. Uh, I worked with a, a number of uh, uh, acquaintances and friends from uh, Oklahoma, one of them being Harry Osway sitting back here in the back on uh, We Shall Remain. And, and it was remarked last night about how smoothly uh, people who weren't actually in the business were able to perform on camera for uh, this particular, uh, uh, or for a number of scenes that we did for uh, uh, the Trail of Tears uh, segment. And I was thinking to myself, well, geez, can these guys just sort of, you know, step out of uh, northeastern Oklahoma, come over here, get on set, and, and become actors? Well, I think they did a. Uh, I think they did a great job of it all. There were there were there were eight guys who came from here, and uh, they they did a, a great job. We used uh, they they had to all be Cherokee speakers.